Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the official He-Man and the Masters of the Universe YouTube channel. My name is James Etock, and today's video is the third in this series of 50 things about dot dot dot. Today I'm focusing on a character that, from looking at the comments, has been very much in demand. Yes, here are 50 things about Evil Lynn. She makes this face when she hears He-Man's voice. Skeletor fails to understand her brand of humour. Evil Lynn, what do you want? Your power, Skeletor! <laughs> what? In No Job Too Small, she happily compliments He-Man's physicality. And so, He-Man, those great, gorgeous muscles of yours are totally useless. Who, Mama? She was once bested by an Earthling in physical combat. At times, her magical wand appears to change size, even in the same scene. She has teamed up with some of the other villains on Eternia, including Gorgon, who wields a truly awesome backscratcher, and Dark Dream. Her name may be one of the best puns of the series. Evil Lynn, Evil Lynn, Evelyn. Get it? She inflicted a lot of damage with the shaping staff in her possession, sending King Randall to the dungeon and transforming him into a goat, transforming Orko into a cricket and Teela into a frog, turning He-Man into a gold statue, transforming the sorceress into a tree, and sadly herself into a snake creature with little wings. Ugh. There's a chance she'd make for a terrific zoologist. I've studied the habits of every vicious creature on this planet. Stratos seemed to have a personal grudge against Evil Lynn. Let me out! Oh, put me down! As you wish. Oh. She once teamed up with both Skeletor and the Sorceress, and they put on a pretty good light show. Her run cycle looks like this. She sports a surprisingly short hairstyle underneath her headpiece, although the script described her as having short black hair. Yeah. She possessed a far better and cuter hairstyle when she was disguised as Magestra. He-Man knows exactly which of Evil Lynn's buttons to push. Skeletor would have done better. Not quite that easy. She enjoys the company of Panthor. Her cartoon character model was initially designed to mirror her action figure and sport the skull motif on her headpiece. At the 11th hour, this was removed. However, the skull actually appears on some of the earliest animated sequences on the series, though you won't be able to see it as it was painted black in order to hide it. But check out this animation cell. See? There it is. There's a chance Evelyn may be Marianne's favorite character. The jury's still out on that one. Around a campfire, she confides in Teela the real reason she sides with Skeletor. I have no loyalty to Skeletor. It is power I want. She can magically produce rope from her fingers. Well, at least when the script dictates it. She was voiced by the late great Linda Gary, who also voiced Teela, the Sorceress, Queen Marlena, Glimmer, Madame Raz, Shadow Weaver, Scorpia, Sweet Bee, Entraptor, to name but a few. Transforming herself into a fireball in order to make a quick exit is something she has performed on occasion. She once gave Jitsu this look. Hmm. She engaged in a very odd team building exercise with Clawful, which led to this moment. She can fire beams from her eyes, which on one occasion turns Merman into stone, or moon rock to be specific. Two times she teamed up with Triclops, with him playing henchman to her very shouty commands. Use your Dista vision, fool! Oh, come on, be nice. Sadly, she did not make one single appearance in the She-Ra series. Even Triclops made an appearance. Indignity. She used her seductiveness to convince Squinch that she admired He-Man, so that he gave He-Man a box, which paralysed He-Man. Good work, Squinch, you little moron. She really loses her patience with Webstore in the episode Journey to Stone City. Skeletor has been trying to break into Castle Grayskull for years. Now it's my turn. And if we gain the power, I intend to share it with no one. She once transformed Kothos into a sand slug. When Kothos took his revenge, she compared her treatment by him to that of a flugel mouse. Like somebody's pet flugel mouse. What the f is a flugel mouse? Humiliation taught Evil in a lesson about revenge. Revenge is never sweet. 
which is the name of the episode. Subtle? I don't think so. When it comes to lying to Skeletor, she's pretty awful. Oh, what's this? Oh, <laughs> uh, nothing. I can see it right in front of me, Evelyn, so it's not nothing. Does it belong to anyone? Uh, no. She should never ever trust Trapjaw. It was her idea, Skeletor. Over the course of the series, she transforms herself into an old lady in The Curse of the Spellstone, a young woman named Nadira in Evelyn's plot, another old lady in The Royal Cousin, and a peasant girl in The Shadow of Skeletor. There are also a couple of others, but these are the most notable and script-serving. Although impossible to see in the cartoon, her irises are actually cat-like. See? She had a tendency to raise her voice and get quite angry. Enough, you fool! Do you think I can do nothing without Skeletor? Think again. Although she makes the same voice when she is happy. I did it! I did it! Even when she whispers, she sounds rather angry. On one occasion, she attacks Skeletor. It didn't go particularly well. When it comes to insults, she's not the most creative. Unhand me, you big cat! She and Webstore carved a pretty impressive bust of Skeletor. What? She actually saves the sorceress from Shigora's hideous spell, transforming the guardian of Castle Greyskull from a harpy back into a human form. Although she does it rather begrudgingly. Evil Lynn's wand originates from Blackpool, a little seaside town in the United Kingdom. Wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. Let me check what Dark Dream said. Or that wand which gives you so much power will be returned to the black pool from which it came. Oh yeah, ignore that last fact, that doesn't count. If she had been coloured like her action figure, she would have looked like this, Yowza. She once sat upon Queen Marlena's throne. On one occasion, she was illustrated without her gauntlets, wrong. She pulls this expression when she attempts to convince Sibylline that she just wants to be friends. Every once in a while, she'll actually try to put out a fire. It's time for him to be our messenger boy. Watch it, Whiplash. Now, now, boy. Don't fight. Her magic keeps her from feeling thirsty or hungry. True fact. And finally, there's no doubt that personality-wise, Evil Lynn was one of the strongest female villains of the 80s. And that's it, people. I hope you enjoyed 50 Things About Evil Lynn. Let me know in the comments section which characters you want me to tackle next. Like and share the video, and subscribe to the channel.